Good evening, everyone. How are you all?
personal opinions regarding the events surrounding the suspension of Superintendent of Schools, Dr. Douglas Adams. Now, at the direction of the Board of Education, I make the following statement on behalf of the Board. It is essential to the mission of the district to assure the safety and well-being of our students. The Board of Education relies upon the district's chief executive office, the superintendent of schools, to review all situations in which students are exposed to inappropriate conduct that may affect their educational experience, whether in academics, athletics, or extracurricular settings. Over the past several weeks, the board sought to meet with Superintendent Adams to address these matters. He was unavailable to the present, to be present for executive sessions, to be given the opportunity to explain why the board had been kept in the dark and why personnel matters were not addressed in light of the gravity of the situation. The superintendent's suspension upon certain charges issued to him were not in response to his two appeals to the commission, but rather addressed those matters that the board sought to meet with him weeks ago. During this school year, we have repeatedly asked for information necessary for board members to carry out their fiduciary duties as trustees in area of finance, and we did not receive the information that we requested that was necessary for informed consideration and action. The Southern Central School District needs a cohesive governance, a cohesive governance team in place in the interest of all students, taxpayers, and the school community. We ask the Acting Superintendent Dr. Costello to be given everyone's full cooperation in her effort to serve the district. Thank you. Public participation, and I will read the policy to remind everyone who has not noticed at previous meetings of what the policy states. This is policy 1230, public participation at board meetings. This is the first segment for public participation, and this one is on action items only. Each segment of public participation <laughs> cannot exceed 30 minutes and shall be set aside during this first section on agenda items and later in the agenda on non-agenda items. Persons wishing to address the board will approach the podium, the podium is right here, and state their name, address, and school community affiliation. Any group or organization wishing to address the board
The first segment is regarding action items only that are being acted on today. So be sure that your comments are related to actions the board is scheduled to act on. Good evening. My name is Matthew Cogan. I'm a junior at Southern High School, the board formerly an active member of the community. Throughout my years as a student at Southern, I've been granted amazing educational opportunities and amazing programs which I cherish deeply. However, the current situation concerning the board with Superintendent Dr. Douglas Adams needs to be explained. From what we know, which is not much, this does not support the best interests of the community. My classmates and I are here tonight in support of our schools, our community, and superintendent, who has been nothing but supportive of our many programs, but also a great leader to supervise such high performing schools. At the last special board of education meeting on March 5th, Dr. Adams was suspended without a reason given to the public. Instead of informing the public on the issue, the public was told after a long wait, not to mention, on this executive session, that the new acting superintendent would be put in place and at Suffolk Central would pay for Dr. DeGame's legal fees. Suffolk Central is known to be an elite, high-performing district in the eyes of many, including teachers and civic. What? Um, not to mention, um, sorry. Um, okay, um, Suffolk Central is known to be an elite, high-performing district in the eyes of many, including everyone who's on the board tonight, Dr. Adams led the charge along with the amazing teachers and staff. From the outside in, it seems like there's a hidden agenda. The court case, Adams vs. the game, is costing taxpayers thousands of unnecessary dollars. Acting Superintendent Dr. Lisa Costello claims that this transition students will be the first priority. Suffolk Central students always felt that they were the first priority until the last election. A consistent four to three divide has been occurring recently on the board, and many of the actions taking place are not in the best interest of the community or the students like myself. Rather, it seems that they are the best interest of the outside influences. These are the actions of a power hungry board who tries to silence any discontent from community members, or in this case, from Dr. Adams. Thus, the actions of the school board over the last year are very concerning to the student body in Southern Central. You are the acting parents of the district and should act appropriately. We, the student body and community, are the children of the district, and when there's a, a dysfunctional household, there's a dysfunctional children. The board should not be committed to make such drastic actions without any transparency leaving the public in the dark on many issues, especially in the case where it affects the students. In May, two seats are up for election. I'm positive that the community members will vote in favor of the candidates that want to see Southern Central thrive, not to come to the politics of such fundamental issues, to protect and educate the whole child. The board is simply wasting time, money, and effort while partially ripping the children apart in this family. I'm pretty sure that every single person in this room wants our school district and community to thrive. I ask the board tonight how your actions over the past year have put kids first. Please. My name is Susan Delaney. Uh, I'm a parent of three students in the Southern 
schools, and I'm a teacher at Southern High School. Last week, the Board of Education shocked the public by voting to suspend our superintendent of schools. It is my understanding that personnel issues, due to their private nature, are not revealed by the district. I understand this, and while I, like many people here, wonder about what led up to the suspension, we will never get that answer. We can only trust that things will play out as they should. Tonight, I'm here to ask the board and the public to re-examine factual events that have occurred in public at board meetings. I have to interrupt. We're going to start with you in the second segment because it's not really the action item. It is. Okay. It is. Okay. It is. Okay. In July 2018, the first meeting of our current board, new members requested district cell phones. At that time, the district's policy did not allow for board members to have phones paid for by the district. Fast forward to February 2019, that policy has now been changed. Board members may request a district paid phone. In late summer, after Steve Walker resigned, Dr. Joe Lloyd, the sitting principal at Sultzburg Elementary School, was recommended to take over as assistant superintendent for human resources. At that time, Dr. Lloyd, a well-regarded member of our leadership team, was voted down by the Board of Ed. Board members claimed it wasn't personal, but that the process of hiring Dr. Lloyd had been flawed. We are now on our third assistant superintendent for human resources since Dr. Lloyd's rejection, and please note, Mr. Cintrell will be leaving us at the end of the month. In December 2018, an RFP for a special engagement audit appeared on a special meeting agenda. In subsequent meetings, this RFP was consistently referred to as a forensic audit. On February 5th, the president of the board made a point to call out her fellow board members for calling the special audit engagement a forensic audit. She explained that although board members were using the terms interchangeably, she emphatically stated the RFP was not a forensic audit. Take a look at tonight's agenda. The Board of Education is literally voting on a forensic audit. Throughout the last few months, the Board has voted to hire an additional lawyer to handle personnel matters and labor relations. They have voted for a VOCES poster agreement for an unspecified investigation. Neither of these actions were precipitated by discussion. They appeared, were voted on, and were passed all at cost to the taxpayer. In education, the standard operating procedure is for district staff to make recommendations to the Board of Education for goods, services, and programs that will benefit students. At no time had Dr. Adams recommended any of these steps to the Board of Ed. Mr. Kushara, our business official, who resigned a little over a week ago, never recommended an audit. No staff member ever uttered a need for the unknown BOCES poster. Board of Ed members are not the experts. You are to oversee what's brought in front of you. This is so for a reason. Our, business, the food, okay. our business office makes recommendations regarding our finances. The curriculum office makes recommendations regarding what our students learn on a daily basis. We will not, we will not allow people to continue each other's speeches. Please have a <laughs>
objective observer who looks at the endeavor and decides its merit. Thank you. This particular work is going to exclude special education. 
Thank you. Any other?
Um, also, they, they actually work with us a lot, and we ask them for, you know, information. They'll give it to us and spend some time not charge us anything for it just because they've been working at that and work with them to say so. Absolutely not the And all existing contractors are welcome to submit their proposals and, you know, there's no indication that they should be replaced. Just as a contract, so the RFPs don't have to mean that the person is not really under contract is going to be removed. So, yeah. it's just a little less of a Any further discussion?
socially. So it's going to be closer. Um, I want to thank the Atkins Superintendent for her words about the students. There's two words that were coming to my mind when I think of Sutton Sutton and Hopper, which I was lucky enough to uh, spend a year at uh, four, four years ago. And the two words are not be proud.
I can tell you that if I feel a certain way, no matter where I am, I stick to my convictions. And I always will. Lastly, I'm an elected official, and I was entrusted by the voters of this district to protect the children and the taxpayers. And that is exactly what I am doing.
And then the, the sudden suspension of the, uh, the superintendent that has all the appearances of retaliation. A board of education so incapable of working with the superintendent that it insists on wasting taxpayer dollars by unnecessarily hiring a labor lawyer for negotiations to undermine the superintendent, despite the fact the board had previously used a labor lawyer for that very purpose and produced no results. And now tonight, we listen to you hiring still two more lawyers on, taxpayer, on the taxpayer dollar. The steady flow of special meetings with little notice to the public. Board agendas, board agendas posted at the last minute, including this, the one for this evening. If this is putting kids first, I can see what putting kids last looks like. Make no mistake, I've got plenty of issues with the, over the years with the lack of transparency in the school district. And surely those are areas that need to be addressed. And using the public trust as board members to sell personal grievances and pay slights is no way to achieve that. And if the kids first ticket had intended to hollow out the district officers, then it should have been part of the campaign platform. But of course it wasn't. And if it was, I suspect the election results would have been quite different. The Southern School District has much to be proud of. We are blessed with wonderful teaching staff, good students, and a lot of
My husband is a certified public accountant for over 20 years. He's worked for big four firms and smaller firms. He has been an auditor. He has told me that a forensic audit is not typically a general audit. It is looking for specific fraud and that any CPA would know that a regular audit tests everything and can find a specific issue. And then it would need to be tested in more detail. I am not understanding why we just voted on this. Furthermore, I have been at almost every meeting. The RFP was for an audit, never for a forensic audit. If I am wrong, correct me. This is the first time I saw the words forensic audit being used in writing. It had been spoken several times. I myself personally asked why it had been called a forensic audit, and we were assured it was not, which you explained tonight that wasn't, but yet tonight we voted on something for the first time we've seen on the agenda. Usually it's the second reading when it's voted on. I agree the election is over. I am also shocked and saddened, saddened by the behavior, not of our community, but of our board. Tonight, saying that where, where there is smoke is fire is 100% correct. You ask us to put forth in the process and of the board. An elected official needs to be held to a higher standard than just a regular community member. You have to have thicker skin. Unfortunately, that's the nature of the job you decided to run for in the election. Tonight, calling out teachers and staff in public saying who has attended meetings, I thought we weren't supposed to discuss personnel in public then being reprimanded by a board member as to why their opinions and decisions should be agreed with. The same board member who on social media called the community member a caboose, which looking it up means an ass. Unfortunately, there is smoke and there is probably fire. We are putting faith, hoping that the three out of the four bed board members who have been repeatedly working and showing that they are in the best interest of our Community, unfortunately, three out of four isn't gonna do it. Who is left running our district right now? Our superintendent is gone. Our lawyer, apparently gone. Our HR person, gone. Our accountant, uh, business budgeting guy, gone. Who's left running, the, running our board? That's all. Awesome.
We'll prove that. cross-country coach back for my last season in Suffer. But you guys, you, I know you guys tried for that, but you're, you're running on the same ticket here, saying that you're for the kids, but it doesn't show that you are. Woo! It Can I ask a question? Yes. I can speak to the board 
What was your question? I didn't ask that one. That would be worse. Oh, because I didn't speak to the board after the meeting. Uh, oh, no. Well, thank you. Okay. <laughs> so, last year when I was campaigning for like the, the three candidates, I was walking around Bon Air with your pamphlets or whatever, just putting them on people's doorsteps without an adult. That was fucking fantastic. Oh, that's right.